<laughs> uh, it's a bit all right. So yeah, my name is Vincent. Um, I uh, recently moved from Singap uh, Saigon to uh, Singapore. Um, in in Saigon, I was doing uh, Docker meetups as well. So when I came here, uh, I'm doing the same. <laughs> um, so yeah, a quick recap of uh, DockerCon. Uh, so first off, uh, how many of you are familiar with Docker? Like I, I know like. All right, so I'd say more than it's about fifty percent, uh, more than fifty percent. So, so I had some emergency slide in case that people didn't were not familiar. This is a new uh, Docker uh, web page UI. I mean, it's quite nice. Um, uh, but considering more more than half of the people here are familiar with the um, with Docker, I'm not gonna go too deep into containers uh, or the architecture. So. The first uh, one of the first announcements of DockerCon was uh, that they have really been working hard on the developer experience. So I'm not sure how many of you are aware of the Docker uh, for Mac and Docker for Windows uh, betas. How many of you have used them? It's like a good bunch of them. How many of you um, feel like they are happy with Docker machine and 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 the way it is and and VirtualBox or whatever and are not switching? How many like? Yeah, there's a couple, right? Right? Or maybe just not not had the time yet to to switch. So here I'm. I, I feel like I, I I should convince you to switch because um, so I was I was basically before I was working on Windows all the time. Now I switched on uh, on I've been converted to Apple, uh, and um, on Windows already I was I was using Hyper-V. I didn't like the virtual box and things like that. Um, so. Um, when Docker for Windows came out, using Hyper-V, I was very. I really wanted to use um, that. So, like, you, when you are using Docker uh, machine, uh, which no, what I, are you? I'm, joking, I'm just using uh, Linux. Uh, you're running Linux. Oh, sorry. Sorry. So I forgot to account for those people that are <laughs> truly running containers <laughs> on their machine. Okay. So, uh, anybody else? Is there anybody still using Docker machine? Like, are you using VirtualBox or? Running on my lab on VSX, on top of VSX. Uh, on, on, on the, uh, sorry, on the top of uh, Ubuntu. All right, on, on to, so you're running a virtual machine? Yes, virtual machine. Okay, all right. All right, uh, in your lab, basically. That's what you said. Okay. All right, so um, how many of you actually saw the, 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 the keynote from the Docker presentation? Yay! Because <laughs> I basically ripped the slides, and uh, but I cut them down because I just want to focus on some parts. So the the Docker for Mac beta and Docker for Windows beta is no longer closed, so any anybody can now get it. Um, so maybe a short demo of how that looks. Switching to that. So I have here. I think it's hopefully big enough. So. I have here an application, uh, which is a, like a small Golang application, which uses Redis and Postgres. And um, let me maybe show you the the compose file. So, so basically, this is my um, my compose file identifying uh, services. So I have a load balancer, which is um, running uh, nginx, and I have um, the application, which is a small Golang application. Uh, because I'm using statically compiled binaries and putting those into a scra like almost scratch, it's an Alpine container. I, I have to build the. Um, I cannot use Docker build. I have to use a make file to build one container, then build the second container. So that's why this compose file is using the image directly, and I'm using Mongo and Redis. So um, so let's let's stand this up real quick. So. Maybe you can see that right now I have um, the Docker for Docker for uh, Mac, and it's running version 1.12. So that's a cool thing. It, it automatically updates and pulls the latest uh, Docker in engines for you. Um, so I'm running Docker beta, and um, okay, so I can do Docker. There is. Currently, no containers except for one container, which we will ignore. And um, I have built already this container, so it's like a 14 megabyte container for. So if you see the container that actually um, compiles is 800 megabyte, and the container I ship is just 14 megabyte using Alpine. So, um, and then I have 
yeah, that's kind of the target. I kind of don't like 800 megabytes containers with uh, yeah, with it's make. Uh, Alpine Golang, they are always smaller also to compile the Go. Uh, I think this is Alpine Golang. Uh, this yeah. dev. Um, Let's see. Ah, this one is not okay. This 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 is Golang 1.6, so it's it's not the Alpine version. And this is my my uh, um, ECS sample binary copied into an Alpine container. I could op uh, also use a Scratch container, but uh, I had some issues with that when using special things. So sticking to Alpine for now. Um, okay, so. In my compose file, I have defined uh, several networks, right? I have defined a back tier network and a front tier network. I have uh, Redis and Mongo connected to the back tier network, and uh, the app connected to uh, both the front tier, alias as apps, and the back tier. So it's kind of like segregated network. And so the, the demo is actually not all about this. It's just to show you how easy it is to just Docker compose up and there we go. It creates um, it created the app for me. So Docker. Let me just ps and I have Redis running. Uh, sorry, I have the whole app stack running, and it should have exposed the ports for me. So let me check. I don't see the, the port exposed though. Uh huh. This is not the right compose file. Sorry, I had to jumble a little bit because I'm trying to use the new Docker uh, bundling, and for this I need to have a different compose file. So let me just um, take the bundle to wait before I do that. Docker compose stop. Sorry, not prepared well. So that just removed the whole stack and. Ah, uh, okay. Let's try it again. No, did 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 I just mess it totally up? <laughs> of course, um, I just overwrite. Why not? Copy bundle to compose. Let's delete it. I thought it would. I thought it did. Didn't test it properly though. So down, eh? Yeah. Oh, okay. Ah, this is better. It's creating. It's actually creating the network. It's creating the. Yeah. Uh, looking looking better. But I still don't see. OK, I messed up my compose files. So um, let me just pick it from uh, the, the web. So I have a repository, luckily. <laughs> um, sorry for that. OK, so let me take this Docker compose file. And Okay. And where is my uh, bundle, though? Yeah, because um, I had to make a difference between the one that that is the bundled one and the one that is. Um, okay. Well, let's do that again. Please, this time. <laughs> so 
so do I expect the load balancer? CLB. Yeah. Finally, so my compose file was missing my load balancer. Now the load balancer is, is exposing port 80 um, on my uh, local laptop. So that's another thing. Uh, if you're coming from Docker machine, managing virtual machines, then with the new um, with the new uh, I have here. So it was earlier. It wasn't running. So trust me. Now it's running. OK. Yeah, there was testing. <laughs> uh, so the, this app is now running on local host on my my Mac and, uh, my MacBook. So I didn't have to like uh, figure out where is my virtual machine running. It actually proxied the the port from my um, uh, virtual machine, uh, which is actually running in X Hive, which is a process like another. And it uh, and there's a proxy running forwarding any ports exposed on the virtual machine directly to my uh, local host. Now, is this, um, is this right, huge? It's a little thing, right? Linux is used to it. <laughs> but for, um, for other developers, it kind of makes the whole thing a little bit less uh, mystical, I would say. Um, so let me take this uh, app where I can upload an image. This goes to S3 and then so I didn't write this app. Uh, it was a, a sample app of how to write a Golang uh, real-time app. And I just uh, created the Docker files for it. And so you can see that I can do things. Maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger. Oops. Um, because one of the things that is cool in this app is the fact that um, below it's showing me which container is serving. So right now, it's the same container. Okay, So that's nothing special. If this guy, uh, they're both connected to the same container, when he says something, it automatically propagates to the other browser. Nothing special. But uh, the cool thing uh, here with, with the whole uh, load balancer setup is if I go and use Docker Compose scale, and I say app equal to 5, and it scales up uh, five containers. Uh, so I can see I have container D94, B, D58, a lot, whole bunch of, of special containers here. And if I go to, I think, do, can you hear me actually when I'm talking? Because I'm like talking inside the, <laughs> <laughs> the box all the time. <laughs> so <you> <laughs> <laughs> um, OK, so go back here, uh, back to Safari. No, not this Safari. OK, here. So now if I refresh, there you see that they're actually being load balanced across the different um, containers. And now they're not connected to the same one anymore. Uh, but if I do test, um, hello, it still works across things. So it still propagates thanks to the Redis uh, that's running behind. So all of this is like for somebody that just started using, I just had to clone the repo, just do Docker Compose up, dash D, go to my local host. Uh, run a scale command and see it automatically scale and uh, you know propagate. I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> so um, okay, so that's the first thing the developer experience, right? Uh, so yeah, you can just go to Docker.com/get Docker and you can install uh, the the uh, beta for Mac, uh, which gives you this very native uh, experience. Now, if you look at the keynote of the DockerCon, they actually have a much cooler demo, uh, which is running Node.js inside the containers, and then spinning up a visual, like a remote debugger with Visual Studio code. So he actually uh, runs, uh, he connects his Visual Studio uh, editor to the container, the, the process running inside the container, uh, which can go through localhost because it's exposed through localhost. And then uh, he actually can live debug his code. So that's a step up from what I just did. Uh, unfortunately, I was not going to rewrite my demo. So, <laughs> um, so the next thing is the orchestration bit. So um, so the, the thing is, right now, um, how many of you are like working with um, Mesos, let's say, like, yeah, Mesos, uh, Kubernetes, Kubernetes, too. Um, so how many of you are using Swarm for Docker orchestration? No. Uh, so, so basically, uh, there, are a, a, there was a whole bunch. Like I'm talking about Swarm before the announcements. Uh, the, the original Swarm was basically. Um, creating a um, a master agent, uh, an, I mean agents on every Docker engine, and a master, 
And then you needed to set up an etcd cluster. Same with Kubernetes. You need to set up a config uh, store to, to then do overlay networking and things like that. So um, it, was, it was all right, I guess. You could do Docker machine up and things like that, but not, not as easy as it could be. So, and also, I guess, not, not really good for Docker's business model. Uh, so they came up with something new. And uh, they took the, the config store. They took the, um, the etcd um, parts of the, you know, the config store and com completely implemented it um, inside the Docker 1.12 uh, engines. So they created a swarm mode inside the engine, uh, which uh, does automatic um, cri cryptography. So you don't have to worry about the um, rotation of the TLS keys. And there's an additional API endpoint, so a complete new sub set of subcommands that you can do from your Docker client, and you can uh, hit the same. Uh, so if you are familiar with Kubernetes, so I only saw one person, anybody or two persons, anybody else familiar with Kubernetes? So three, right? So if you're familiar with Kubernetes, the terminology is very, very like uh, similar. So um, so first. Um, it, it does uh, self-organizing. Well, Kubernetes doesn't do that necessarily like without a lot of setup. But um, this part is kind of cool. So let me show you that. So I've, I've just used, um, inside, inside my repo, but I haven't pushed it up to GitHub yet, um, I hope. OK. Inside my uh, repo, I have a Terraform plan, and it creates. Um, it creates, oops, sorry, I'll, I'll stick there. <laughs> uh, it creates the uh, VPC, it creates a key pair, it creates uh, three nodes, and uh, they're all running Docker 1.12. So I didn't have to do anything in my Terraform plan, well, except for all of these Amazon uh, things. But to get Docker running inside these, these machines was very simple. And well, I lost the connection again, so let me try. OK. And so here I have, I have uh, Docker version 1.12, release candidate 3, but with experimental enabled. So um, it allows me to, to do some experimental things, uh, such as um, work playing with Docker application bundles, uh, distributed application uh, bundles. Uh, this, I think it's Ubuntu Willy. Is it important? Can there be any I think it should be. Yeah, I was mentioning CoreOS. Like, would it run with CoreOS also the same way? The, cor the way CoreOS works is it bundles Docker inside the CoreOS, right? Yeah. So um, the, the, the doesn't have 1.12 yet. Yeah, so the, even the alpha channel, they're still on 1.11 or whatever. Uh, but still, you can force it. Like I did it in the past. Like I just uh, I just curl the Docker thing and uh, put it inside user op bin and relink it or whatever, uh, or create. An I, I I could force it, but obviously that's not perfect. Uh, so I was able to play with it, but uh, I, it's not support. It's not a good idea at all. Uh, it just when I was doing a demo, I was always using CoreOS. But uh, for this, um, no, you won't be having CoreOS experiment. Uh, won't be having Docker experimental on CoreOS. I uh, also prefer CoreOS, but <laughs> uh, OK. So, so this is running the, um, and I can do Docker Swarm init. And before I do that, um, I have, so this is another um, application. Hopefully it loads. This, this is a visualizer, which is um, visualizing the swarm. Uh, ideally, I put them next next to each other, but I'm going to try and switch real quick. So when I init, <laughs> it's a bit stupid to do it like this. Uh, anyway, uh, and then here I can um, join. So I'm using the private IP of this, mas this master. So after I did the Terraform, you can see the public IPs are here, and the node IP is here, 10.0.1.137. And I'm joining here to 10.0.1.137. So so right now, the join, this node joined the swarm as a worker. And let me do the other one as well. 
So yeah, but it, it comes up uh, before I can you know switch to it. But yeah, okay, this, this is a, the visualization of the cluster, and um, so I didn't have to set up an etcd cluster. I didn't have to to do anything. Well, you don't know because I just show you these three commands and I didn't show you anything else. But believe me, I didn't. And um, Okay, so I, this is basically, I'm going to push this all into to GitHub, but it's, it's basically, uh, um, right, it, it's, it's uh, similar to the, the demo. So the way I created the visualizer was using Mino, Mino Marks Visualizer, and then I, can, uh, I was doing the, the init, and then I was doing the join, and, uh, well, I can also show you that the nodes now are Docker uh, node, is it no, node ls? I think swarm, right? Shit. Um, what am I doing? <laughs> I did run through this before. I should just copy this thing. So it, it shows me uh, that they have a consensus, uh, that they are all in a swarm. OK, so no external data uh, required. And I can, OK, let's go to the next slide. One of the key things is that uh, Docker engine, the new 1.12 Docker engine, is taking care of the um, security. So it's automatically generating um, TLS certificates and uh, automatically rotates the keys. So, um, so nodes are accepted to the cluster if they have uh, val valid keys. And um, if you want to revoke any node, you can take out the node by revoking the key. I haven't played with that, though. So <laughs> and then uh, there's a new service API, so we can um, similar to Kubernetes replica controllers, we can create a, a service entity, which is then going to, we define the desired state, and um, the cluster is going to look at the actual state and try to run to or converge towards the desired state. So um, an example is to run this uh, Docker service create, hello world. I can run it here. So right now, the service is running. And if I look at the visualizer, it actually visualized it. <laughs> so there's one service running. And if I do Docker service, I think it's scale. And then hello world. Is it? Let me just confirm. I can inspect, uh, I can scale Hello World five times. I mean, to, to, to tell him that I want to have five of them. So um, now it's <coughs> right now there is only one running. Let me describe. Well, let me go to the visualizer because that's cooler. Oh, shit, it's too late. It's already running. <laughs> uh, so this is basically what they were using during the demos on, on, on at the Docker keynote. And um, yeah, I'm too slow. I, I should set up my screen split, but sorry. Let me describe. I'm still not used to Mac. <laughs> OK. All right. So it, it, this is the, the desired state, to have five replicas running. And uh, if I were to kill one of the nodes, um, like I haven't actually tested this. So this is live. <laughs> but this is like from the demo. Um, I should say no. OK, so this one closed. And ah, quickly, come on. Uh, that didn't do much. <laughs> so it's supposedly one of them should go away, and they should reschedule on the other one. I haven't tested this. So we want five. 
<laughs> there it goes. I missed the, the magic word. <laughs> that, that, I, I don't deserve anything. There was all the Docker uh, people. <laughs> um, so OK. So um, cool, right? Um, is yeah. That, is that called the self-healing? Yeah, that's called self-healing. That's basically, if you are familiar with Kubernetes, um, but it's kind of the same concept. Like Kubernetes was introduced open source back in 2014. It became production ready in August uh, 2015. And now they reached just released uh, version 1.3, um, just like last Friday. And uh, the whole thing of Kubernetes is, is to introduce concepts such as having replica controllers that match the actual number of services running in, or number of pods running inside the cluster. And then uh, if one of them you know, constantly like, evaluates um, what is running versus what is the desired state, and if there is a difference, like uh, if, if you change the desired state, you only want four instead of five, then it will automatically kill one off. If you dis change the desired state that you want six, it will create more. And if one of them dies, it again sees that the desired state was to have it running, so it starts again. So it makes the whole uh, self-healing um, uh, ideas much easier because it's, based, it's called a re reconciliation loop, uh, which comes from robotics, and which is a really cool thing that I think Kubernetes did. I don't know if there's some other framework. Does it come from somewhere else? Uh, Mesos do it. Mesos do it. OK, forget about Mesos. <laughs> <laughs> I need to play more with Mesos. <laughs> Uh, okay, so um, rolling updates. Uh, I, so the idea of rolling updates is uh, that you just go and change the image that you want to run, and then uh, the, that's in your desired state, and then it automatically sees that it's not running the right one, and it should update it. I don't have a demo for that. Um, I already pushed it with killing a, <laughs> a node. So um, yeah, so the rescheduling I was able to show. Then there is this uh, built-in routing mesh. So um, it's kind of the same as Kubernetes when you, uh, in Kubernetes, you run a, a kube proxy service uh, on every agent. And if you hit uh, any of the agents uh, on, on the exposed cluster port, then it will automatically route the, the, the call within the cluster to find the nodes that implement, or the pods that implement uh, what you need. So I don't actually have like a, a good demo of that here, because the application I showed you earlier with the two browser screens. I tried to deploy it, but um, it didn't expose the port. So I wasn't able to hit the port. So I unfortunately cannot show you that part. Um, OK, so that's all part of the, th those are the four, four concepts that Docker 1.12 gives. Um, so if you are running, if you install Docker for Mac, like I showed you earlier, I can, I can actually, ha I'm actually running this version, so I can do Docker Swarm init and create and play with the service concepts and things like that on my local laptop. Uh, it works the same as is it as if it's in the cluster, uh, except Docker for Mac does not run multiple uh, processes, not no multiple nodes uh, at this stage. So I couldn't do the demo that I would, I just showed you on my local laptop because I'm just running one node. Uh, so I, I, I thought. That's not interesting, so I, I didn't do it. But you can play with the service concept and the tasks concept. Um, so yeah, you declare. I actually went through most of this, right? Uh, scheduling, I mean, reconciliation thing. Uh, the cool thing about this, um, this uh, implementation, uh, the internal distributed state store is taking a part of etcd. So it's using the gossip, uh, well, it's using Raft consensus, I think. Uh, and, and then. The workers, they are communicating with the manager using um, gRPC, which is like much faster than REST API. So it's not HTTP. Uh, it's like a binary protocol, right? It's like protocol buffers. Google. It's from protobuf, proto right? So, so it's, it's, uh, it's faster. Uh, and actually, uh, Kubernetes, I mean, etcd3, the new version of etcd, which was released, I think, last week, they, um, they also implement grcp, uh, gRPC. OK, so the, they have a strong, strongly consistent uh, and uh, simple to operate, and they're fast. Uh, yeah. OK, um, this is very much still a re uh, um, release candidate. It's very much in, in, um, in still under development. Uh, it's also, as far as I understand, it doesn't scale that high yet. Like right now, um, it, you can only run like I think 40, 45 nodes or something with this engine, which uh, still needs to to be scaled a lot for I mean for like 
um, the bigger cloud players, this is important. Um, this was, by the way, this comment I did not pull out of my head. I picked it up from one of the Kubernetes meetups. So <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, I actually should probably fact check. But <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, this one I haven't played with yet. Uh, but this hell check. So you're able to define hell checks inside, um, inside a Docker file. Anybody played with that? If you want to um, see this now, all of the DockerCon uh, videos have been posted, and they're available on, on YouTube. Um, so you can actually re watch and see all the slides there. Um, I actually wanted to do a demo of this as well, but I ran out of time. Um, then there's this idea of a plugin model. I also haven't played with that. So the idea of installing um, plugins, I actually don't ask me questions about that because I, I, I haven't looked into it much. I just thought, as this is a recap of DockerCon, I'm, I should mention it. Uh, but I also need to investigate more into it, so sorry for that. Um, yeah, and, and, and permissions. Um, right, the, the, the several parts. So um, the several parts that, that actually like take care of it, actually. It's a rough consensus, like I said. Um, but I haven't looked <laughs> more, more into that. Sorry. I think, I think that's about, I'm, I'm probably going to keep it at this. Um, yeah, one more thing is that the whole orchestration part is completely optional. So uh, obviously, if you are familiar with existing orchestration frameworks, this is kind of completely um, undermining their whole framework, because Docker used to be just a container runtime. And uh, now it's also doing orchestration. So uh, it's, it's not bad, because yes, it does make it uh, easier for people. It also puts uh, a target for other frameworks to achieve the same um, easiness for other people to use it. So I think that's great like, um, to, to make it like that. Um, but if you don't want to use it, you can still use Docker without it. And yeah. That's basically it. Oh, yeah, there's a whole, there's a, a third part of the um, announcements, which is that um, the similar to the Docker for Mac and Docker for Windows experience that is native or very native to the operating system, uh, they also are working on Docker for Amazon and Docker for Azure, uh, which are currently in beta, and you need to sign up for it. So you go to docker.beta.docker.com, uh, you sign up for Docker for Azure, and then you, they will uh, pro give you the resources for you to play with it. And um, they will, you know, ex expand it. Like they have, they, they reduce the amount of people that have access to it because they want. Otherwise, everybody starts having problems, and then they have a difficulty supporting people. So uh, that's how it, I don't have access to it either yet. Um, yeah, I haven't looked into that. Um, so the last part that I want to quickly touch on is the distributed application bundle, uh, a portable format for multi-container applications, right? I'm reading off the slide. <laughs> um, so the idea is to just uh, bundle your whole compose file. So the compose file that I had earlier, that's why I had two different ones. Because one of the compose files, I have the load balancer in front of it. And then the other one, I don't have a load balancer. Because when I deploy my application, I just want it to uh, to deploy without the load balancer, and I will let the ELB Elastic Beanstalk, uh, sorry, uh, Elastic Load Balancer from Amazon load balance across my my containers. So that's why I didn't uh, include it. That's why I had to. Do it. And so when I have this, um, I actually have the the Docker Compose application here uh, with uh, also I can remove the. So this is the. It's visible, right? Um, so I'm running the doc the same, except I'm not running a load balancer. So I have two networks and doing this, um, Mongo and, and Redis. So let's say I, I want to deploy this as a single stack. Normally, you wouldn't. You would put Mongo outside. Uh, I think definitely I would put Mongo uh, using Amazon RDS, or, or sorry, DynamoDB or, or something else, or a CloudFormation separate stack outside of my, my uh, container runtime. And then Redis. Yes, I can I can bundle Redis um, to be scaled as well. But okay, so um, this is just a demo. So don't 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 think this is like the way to do things. Um, so I can do Docker compose bundle, and to do this you need to have the experimental features enabled. So this is not yet um, in the stable branch. I think that's it. Right? Gives me a bunch of. 
Maybe that's why it didn't work earlier. I didn't look at the warnings before. Um, networks volumes fine. Okay, so I have now I have the uh, ecssample.dsb file, which is a JSON format. Let me. Do I have it here? No. Shoot. I would like to have JQ. No, I don't have. So yeah, it's um, I have it suited to this. I think this might be really small. Command shift. Command plus to make it bigger. Yeah. But yeah. Command shift enter. Command shift enter. I think you can make this bigger. Dude, your key is there, man. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? <coughs> Oops. Is it? Yeah. Uh, that's okay. I'll revoke it. <laughs> <laughs> This is not the honest B access key, by the way. <laughs> this is this is my personal access key. <laughs> yeah, you can spin up a whole bunch of things with that. Okay, I need to revoke it. <laughs> Didn't think about that. Okay, uh, so nobody is on the computer right now. Can you please close your computer? <laughs> All right. All right. So uh, this is. No, this key only has access to S3. You only have access to one bucket. I did proper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. This key is the, uh, well, you can try it. Go ahead. <laughs> you can upload things to S3 and give me a huge charge on S3, but that's it. Um, so yeah, so it, it, it just has like the, the application defined. And um, you actually don't, they're actually going to change the name. So the only thing you have to do right now, if you if you try this out, you just ECS sample DAP, and then um, well, I have the same file here, ECS sample DAP, and then if you do Docker uh, deploy ECS sample error frontier not found. Okay, why? Earlier it worked. <laughs> um, OK, maybe because I don't know. OK, but I had, uh, anyway, even earlier I could do docker deploy ECS sample. And it's supposed to, I, ha I haven't actually been able to open the port and hit the service. So believe me, um, earlier, I don't know why, I, I let's forget about it. This is, uh, Any question? yeah. Yeah, what's the difference between the deploy and uh, docker compose up? Um, so docker compose up um, is just, OK. If you do Docker deploy, it's going to create a the new it's going to hit the new service endpoint and create the service definition with the desired state. And Docker compose up is just going to create the containers, right? It's not going to do self healing or any of that. Okay. So with Docker uh, deploy, you're you're creating a service, and then you you can actually do Docker Docker task. Sorry, stack. So the second new command is Docker stack, and then you can do uh, tasks. And then ECS sample. But obviously, my ECS sample didn't create, so nothing is there. But you can then list all of the um, tasks. And so the, the, the way it works is you have services, which are the desired state. And then the services spin off tasks. And so it's kind of like Kubernetes pods, tasks. But um, it, tasks, they say it's different from pods because it can be a virtual machine. It can be a container. It can be a unikernel. It can be anything. So they want to decouple it from the container uh, concepts. That's why it's called uh, tasks. Uh, but yeah, so now you have Docker uh, stack to hit the service uh, side, so to define desired state. OK, so unfortunately, even my deploy didn't work. But um, yeah, I, I definitely want to, I'll definitely keep playing with it. So this was announced uh, back in 20th of June, so I didn't have a lot of time to, to play with it. So. OK, so this is still very experimental. Um, and that was my demo. And that's it, basically. Right? That's all I have. OK, thank you for listening. <laughs> I'm going to talk. That was all right. Question. Yeah, yeah, how, question. How, how is this? How is the service different from like Compose? Like, why can't it just add additional features in Compose? Do like, you know? Um, why? Uh, huh. 
No, but you could point to Docker Compose to a swarm and then you can just spin up continuously as well. Right. I don't know if the, the stream captured the question, so I'll repeat it. So, uh, so your question was that why why did why don't they just add these features into Docker Compose? And actually, they did right when initially they created the swarm, <coughs> Docker Swarm. They created the ability to Docker Compose against the swarm and then experimental rescheduling and everything like that. Uh, why do they go different now? I think because they put all of the the, because they completely redesigned the, 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 the desired state concepts, like they took this completely from, from the other frameworks such as Kubernetes to just implement a replication loop that is running inside the engine. Uh, so if you do Docker Compose, it's very static. Um, I think if you were doing this against the swarm, I don't know actually. I think they might be hitting um, uh, roadblocks where the, the Docker Swarm agent was working in a certain way. Maybe not to break backwards compatibility. I don't know. Uh, it's a good question. Uh, maybe I can figure that out <laughs> at some point. Feel free to post it uh, on the Meetup group if you found an answer. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Any updates on the Unikernels? Updates in the Linux kernel? Uni Unikernels. Ah, on Unikernels. Um, they don't talk about uh, unikernels. They just say that they were they, they did a great job, the unikernel team, for preparing the Docker for Mac because they're using a lot of the unikernel like um, uh, technology to run like uh, a proxy and a VPN kit. I mean, th those all these these frameworks that they open sourced recently to to um, create. Um, this uh, network so to to create like this X Hive process running and then to use the uh, to create. One cool thing I should mention about the Docker for Mac, which none of the existing um, Docker machine implementations do, is that the Docker for Mac does the OSXFS, like the um, notifica I notify uh, propagations from the local file system to the um, XHive process or the, the, the Linux machine. So your question was about unique kernels, and I just answered about Docker for Mac. So um, I don't know anything about, I haven't seen anything about the Unikernel team. I think they're working hard on, on Docker for Mac and, and other things like that. So, and I, my opinion, I, I, I think that's far out in the future. <laughs> uh, Unikernels may come, yeah? I think it's a good idea, but yeah? When will it be ready? But the, the, the Docker 1.12? Yeah. Uh, I think it was. I'm pulling things out of my, uh, <laughs> um, but uh, I actually have notes. They, they actually mentioned. I think it's it's in mid July. I'm not sure. There's also another thing uh, that they they want everybody. They're gonna do a hackathon because they just released like they they open source the HyperKit. A lot of the tools, the internal pieces, even the Swarm Kit that is used by Engine is also open sourced. So they're gonna announce. They wanna do uh, everybody like every meetup community across the world to do another Docker uh, hackathon. So you know, like in the past, they did like for the uh, several uh, iterations of hackathons, right? And if you participate, you actually like, you get swag, you can um, things, and it's something that the Docker Singapore meetup groups should also organize. And and Honestbee is always, uh, um, I think, very eager to host. Um, yes. It's a great place to work. Assuming we can host all the people <laughs> and we're not constrained by it. numbers, right. yeah, we'd be happy to host. Right. We more food this time, I promise. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that, would, that, that would be awesome. So to, to work and to play with these uh, these new kits uh, and to like, there's a whole ecosystem around Docker of tools that I think can be moved and take advantage of these new open source libraries. And I think it would be great. And if you if you are a good hacker, <laughs> as it were. Um, you actually can get tickets uh, to go to DockerCon, uh, to attend DockerCon and things like that. So, so it's, it's, I think, really worthwhile. So I think the Docker Singapore meetup, should, uh, we will definitely try to organize something with that. Um, yeah? Have you tried the universal control plane? Universal control plane. So that's, I, I played with it, yeah, but I, uh, <laughs> uh, no opinion. <laughs> Have you played with it? Is it good? Yeah, I heard from people that actually use it that it's really good. Uh, I, my experience, I, I played with, um, what was it before, Tum Tum, right? I played with Tum Tum before, before they were acquired, and uh, I thought it was a bit, I, I, I didn't, I had some weird, but I think it was okay, but at the time we were very, uh, like, 
minimal I try to do, and it spin up a whole bunch of containers on my I on my. I see that thing. you use Terraform. Yeah. Terraform is better. Uh, I think Docker control plane is uh, much more higher level to to manage. Like you you define your services, uh, you define your workloads. Right, uh, Terraform it really is very low level, just provision infrastructure. Even for, I mean, not provision, just um, create the infrastructure. And actually, if you want to do provisioning and, and, and things like that, you, you, you need to have something additional like uh, Ansible or something else, or another configuration management. Ter Terraform doesn't do that. Um, right. Good question. Anything else? Anyone? Yeah? Can you recommend any container auto scaling? Yeah. Container auto scaling? Ah, um, I think all those. Sorry. In, in Marathon they have, but um, if you're not using Marathon. Marathon. Mar marathon. Ah, a marathon. Um, well, I personally like Kubernetes. Um, uh, you, they have a horizontal pot auto scaling, so you can do that with Kubernetes. Um, marathon can do it. Um, I think there is plan for putting this inside the Docker engine as well now. Um, so, but I, I, that's definitely not not in it right now. I think I haven't seen anything. Auto scaling, no, I haven't seen anything about the auto scaling right now. But try like if you're already familiar with Marathon, then um, actually all of these frameworks can probably run on top of the new engine. Uh, but like I said, this is very release candidate. So for now, you stick with what you have. <laughs> okay, anything else? Anyone else? No? All right. Uh, yeah, also one more thing. Sorry. Uh, OnSB um, is hiring. So if you're interested in to play with uh, containers, if you want to uh, build like a, a, an infrastructure orchestration and things like that, um, please do apply. Very much appreciate it. <laughs> um, I think they're a very nice uh, host for this event. So um, just for information, I had to do it. <laughs> no, I, 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 love, I love it. That's why. <laughs> OK. So. I invite uh, Ruby on real stock. Uh, quick question. It's not actually 